Hello, everyone, and welcome to Literary Tales. I'm your host, Paul Kraus, and in this episode, as we continue an examination of Leo Tolstoy's masterpiece, War and Peace, we now turn to two of the most prominent female characters and their contrasts and dialectical relationship to one another, Natasha and Elena. The two women who are featured most prominently in War and Peace, Natasha and Elena, couldn't be more starkly contrasted with each other. And in their stark contrast, the two move toward different destinies, like the two unfolding cities in St. Augustine's masterpiece, The City of God. Like Andre and Pierre, Natasha and Elena are devised as paired characters to each other. The dialectical contrast between the two are great and readily apparent to any reader. Elena is beautiful, but bodily objectified, and somewhat dull in mannerisms and face. She has the same constant though beautiful smile, and bears her lovely shoulders and breasts to the crowds and everyone whom she meets. She is never described as having a face filled with life and love, nor is there any concentration on Elena's eyes, which are the windows to the soul, and, as such, life. As she is described, Tolstoy writes, Elena smiled. She rose with the same unchanging smile with which she had first entered the room, the smile of a perfectly beautiful woman. With a slight rustle of her white dress, trimmed with moss and ivy, with a gleam of white shoulders, glossy hairs, and sparkly diamonds, she passed between the men who made way for her, not looking at any of them, but smiling on all, as if graciously allowing each the privilege of admiring her beautiful figure and shapely shoulders, back, and bosom. Natasha is the exact opposite of Elena. Not only is she yet a woman, she is only 12 years old when introduced, she is nevertheless described with having beautiful eyes, though not being particularly bodily beautiful like Elena. When introduced, Tolstoy writes of Natasha that she has black eyes, a wide mouth, not pretty, but full of life, with childish bare shoulders. Note here the stark contrast, at least carnally, with Elena. Natasha has said to be full of life, though not particularly beautiful. Elena is described as beautiful, but is nowhere described as full of life, and this is a prophetic foreshadowing of their destinies. To use modern English jingo, Elena is, in many ways, the typical valley girl, the it girl, the ideal trophy girlfriend and trophy wife. She turns heads at all the venues, yet she is far more than that. She is cunning rather than naive. She has ambitions, and she executes these plans to deadly effect on Pierre and Natasha as the story unfolds. Elena is also the classical femme fatale, and that is perhaps the better, the better model to view her as representing and embodying in the work. She is the sexy and objectified woman whom lustful men would die for, but she is not a doltish and naive sex-craved machine like the California blonde conjured up in the American mythological imagination of the post-1980s. She is cunning and deceptive. She is much more like Ishtar in the Epic of Gilgamesh, much more like Aphrodite, Hera, or Athena in the Iliad, or Juno in the Aeneid. And so Elena is a cunning yet equally beautiful woman who can seduce men to their doom and demise. Natasha is the opposite. Yet a woman, she is deeply naive, as reflective in her romance with Andre, but especially her falling prey to Anatole at the behest of Elena, who is implied to be the backroom mover of the breaking up of the betrothal between Natasha and Andre. 
When Natasha is confronted by her best friend and cousin, Sonia, along with her maid, she accuses them of misdeeds and hate. She excoriates Sonia for not understanding true love and not knowing at all, like she does, despite they having only been together for a few hours and bases her knowledge of him by his flattering and deceitful letters. Natasha is not the image of picturesque beauty like Elena, and unlike Elena, who is cunning, Natasha is childish and naive. Yet Natasha was the one filled with life, whose eyes always remain a major image in her scenes because eyes, as the windows to the soul, are also the wombs of life. Natasha, despite her naivete and mistakes, slowly develops to maturity, both physically, emotionally, intellectually, and spiritually. In a touching scene with Andre before his death, she begs his forgiveness for realizing the pain and torment she has caused by falling for Anatole's predatory advances. Andre, in his Christ-like moment of forgiveness, tells her that she has nothing to apologize for, because he has already forgiven her. As she continues to mature, she falls in love and eventually marries Pierre Bazukov. Their marriage is not perfect, but it is loving and meaningful. Natasha's joy is found in the love of her husband and the joy of childbearing, as she declares to Pierre, I love you madly, I love you madly, madly, madly. Natasha, who was introduced as full of life, finally brings life into the world with her love of Pierre, which manifests in the birth of children and a family. Elena, by contrast, beautiful though she is, was never once described, as we've said, as teeming or boiling with life like Natasha. Elena's marriage to Pierre was purely for materialistic advancement, something that enriched her status in Russian high society. She doesn't love Pierre and causes him much grief and pain. Elena eventually seeks divorce and pays for her sins, literally. Elena's conversion to Catholicism is motivated by self-centered greed. She pays her Jesuit teacher to give the money to the Pope, a large sum of money, to secure an annulment, which was denied to her by the Russian Orthodox Church. But her sins must be paid for, as all sins must be paid for. Elena dies, it is implied, through a botched abortion. Her beauty was deadly. It killed her. It nearly killed Pierre, too. Yet Pierre was able to escape and find the love that brings meaning and new life in the world through his marriage with Natasha. And through Natasha's marriage to Pierre, she fulfills the life that she embodies. Tolstoy presents two models of womanhood, but only one model of femininity in War and Peace. Natasha becomes a woman and embraces her nature through her femininity, which is receptive to life and family. She grows in her love and becomes a blossoming flower of joy, bringing new life into the world. Elena, by contrast, is a woman, but never exudes femininity in the traditional sense because she is materialistically minded. Far from being open to love and life, she shuts herself off from love and life. As such, she moves down the path destined for women who advance themselves in the materialistic cutthroat world of materialistic self-advancement, again, represented not only by Elena's material beauty, but also by her concern for wealth and societal status. Unreceptive to love and life, her moment of bringing life into the world is the very thing that kills her through, the, through her botched abortion. That moment which should have brought life into the world is that moment which brings her demise. Natasha, being the very conduit of life in her marriage with Pierre, ends up bringing life into the world, as already mentioned. And in the dialectical contrast, 
between Natasha and Elena, we see Tolstoy's vision of how meaningful life is brought into the world, especially for women. Rather than pursue materialistic advancement and materialistic comfort, one must ultimately bring love into the world through marriage, and through that love and marriage, life itself blossoms, and in that life, joy and love is found.